Okay, welcome back. In this project, we're going to create a cool sports graphic. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is go to pixlr.com slash e, go to create new. Uh, we're again going to use the Instagram size, but we're going to change the height to 1350. Again, that's the largest uh, format that Instagram will accept. That's a four or five aspect ratio. And let's name this right off the bat. We'll call it sports graphic. We're going to hit create. <clears throat> now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our paint bucket which you can find in the toolbar. And we're gonna to use the color white, which we can select right here. Notice the hex code is FFFFFF. We'll hit okay. And we're basically just gonna fill that in with the color white. Then we're gonna create a, a new layer. It's gonna be an empty layer. And we're going to then grab the shape tool and we're going to set our uh, foreground color to black. We're gonna hit okay. And we're gonna set the stroke to 25 and use the rectangle. And we're basically gonna cover about a third of the canvas like so. So you see the black line right there. And then that, it is a stroke. So if I were to make another one like so, you could see that um, it's sort of this stroke all the way around. We just want the stroke to go across, not on the left or the right or the bottom. So undo that one right there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a, another layer that's going to utilize a blend mode technique. So we're going to go to Pixabay. This link is in the video and in the instructions. We're going to copy this image. You can just right click on it from Pixabay. Go to copy image. And then in Pixar, we're going to press command V. Or we go to edit paste. And ooh, if you get that, just hit uh, allow. Um, and we're going to paste in the picture of concrete. Now I'm going to take my selection tool here, my arrange tool, and I'm going to rotate this thing once and then I'm going to resize it a little bit. So I'll use the scroll wheel or a two finger scroll to move my, uh, to sort of zoom out a little bit. And I just want to cover this entire screen like so. And then I'm going to change my blend mode by clicking these three dots from none to multiply. And I'm going to adjust the transparency to probably around 40, 45% somewhere in there. Sort of gives it that textury sort of look. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our athlete. And so right now I'm doing this for a team called the Titans and I actually have no idea where they're from. Um, but here's this cool picture from Pixabay. You could do this um, with really any colors in any picture. We're gonna copy the image. We're gonna bring it into uh, Pixlr by again, uh, Command V. We're going to edit paste. We're gonna have this uh, picture right here. So if you use the cutout tool, you'll see that there's an AI cutout tool, but that's actually a premium uh, feature that doesn't really work. And the technique that we're gonna use is gonna sort of be forgiving. We're gonna sort of hide our crimes. Uh, so we're gonna use the, we're gonna use the uh, brush or draw cutout tool. I'm gonna take my brush like so, and I'm just gonna sort of go around the perimeter. Now I'm gonna fast forward this to the end but basically what I want to do is I want to, as carefully as I can, just sort of cut this out and I'm not erasing. This is more forgiving than that. If I went too far, you can see that I can change my mode to add to cutout. And so this is sort of like unerasing. In Photoshop, we call this masking. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up and then I'll come back in just a moment. Okay, once you make it all the way around with the cut tool, um, you know, you should have something that looks like this. Now, if you zoom in, uh, you'll see that it, it certainly isn't perfect, but we're gonna add an effect in a moment that's gonna sort of hide some of our crimes. Um, before we get to that, we're gonna temporarily turn off this layer and we're gonna go to our text tool over here, our type tool rather, and we are going to type in the name of the team. Uh, so I could either click right here and then I'll be prompted um, uh, or what I can do, here, here's a better idea. I'm gonna click on the plus button right here and I'm gonna add a new text layer. And I'm gonna write in Titans in capital letters right there. And then I will come over here and I'm gonna position this sort of in the middle and I'm gonna use my type tool and I'm gonna adjust the settings. The font that we're gonna use for this is a font uh, that starts with a J, it's called Juvenile. So we're gonna find our alphabetically sorted Type settings over here, HI, and here's our J. You'll see it's sort of this uh, athletic style. And we're gonna increase the font size to 375. And you'll see that if it doesn't fit in the text box anymore, we just have to grab it by the edge here and make it fit. 
and I'm going to center this and then under settings here I'm going to make sure that this is centered in the text box I'm going to increase my line spacing that's sort of how I'm sorry your letter spacing that's how far apart the uh, the text is um, within the word I can exit out of there I'm going to position that again like so and make my text box a little bit larger get that centered I actually want this to spill over just a little bit I think it looks I think it looks cool that way and then we're going to adjust our transparency settings I'm just going to lower that on down to about 15 percent because I want it to be sort of like subtle there as if it's I don't know emblazoned in the wall in some capacity okay and I turn this back on you see that the stack order is important we want that to be on the wall so I'm going to rearrange the stack order by bringing this a little bit higher up whatever's up at the top here that's closest to you now what we're going to do is we're going to emulate a shadow for the athlete right here uh, I want to position him towards the bottom just because his feet are a little bit wonky so I'm going to sort of like hide those just by lowering this and then I'm going to create a new layer that's empty. I'm going to take my brush tool with the color black. I'm basically just going to color in a silhouette version of the athlete. I'm going to pause this uh, and I will come back when I am done with this step. Once you have gotten uh, all the way around the perimeter, what I like to do is I increase my brush size uh, just a little bit so that it's easier to fill in. So I'm going to go over here, just bounce that up a little bit, and now I can sort of fill in this remaining space. So you can see that uh, mine isn't perfect, and we're actually we're not aiming for perfection here. We just sort of want the general idea of this silhouette. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the stack order and size to make this appear as if it's this uh, athlete's shadow. Um, and we're going to be using a different transparency setting as well as one of the filters that you'll find up here cause, uh, called a Gaussian blur. And so uh, let's go ahead and let's do that. Um, I'm going to press Command R. Um, I could also use my uh, arrange tool or my selection tool to grab the bounding box or the transform controls right here. And I'm just going to make this really big as if it's you know a shadow that is casting from some light source. If you've missed a spot when you've uh, filled it in, that's fine. Just grab your brush tool again and then just hit those blank spots and you could actually probably even get away with not doing that. Now of course a shadow is supposed to be behind the subject so let's go ahead and change the stack order. I'm going to lower that down right there and even uh, by just lowering my transparency to about I, don't know, I think 12 to 15 percent that's going to be sort of you know you're going to have to take a look and sort of determine that. I think 12 is kind of cool right there. Um, it already looks pretty good, but in order to enhance it even further, just because it still looks a little bit sort of hand-drawn, especially right here around the helmet, we're going to go to Filter, and we're going to go to Gaussian Blur, and you can see that it's just going to blur the edges a little bit. I'm going to boost this uh, quite a bit, around 55%, and toggle this on and off. You can see right up here especially the difference. That's no Gaussian Blur. That's with the Gaussian Blur. It's just going to soften things up. You could probably even boost it up to 70, 75 I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click apply. Okay, <clears throat> now the technique that we're going to use next um, in some graphics programs allows you to create a new layer from all of the layers beneath, but we don't have that in uh, Pixlr. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to file, and we're going to go to save, and we're going to save this as a JPEG uh, to a folder, desktop or, or wherever. Click download, we'll click uh, save right here, sports graphic, I'm going to hit save right here. I'll hit close, next out of here, and now I'm going to add a new layer that is an image, and it's the image that I just saved. And so what the reason that we're doing this is because we want to add some effects that apply sort of uniformly across everything. So there's really no visual difference. If I turn this off, you can't really see, well, I guess I have to adjust its position just a little bit, but now if I turn this on and off, you can see there's really no difference. Um, except that this is all sort of a flattened layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, some filters right here that are going to sort of uniformly make this uh, 
look more consistent. There's going to be a continuity. I'm going to start by adding grain. Grain is sort of uh, what happens in low light photography. If I boost this all the way, you can see it right in his face especially. But we're adding that same amount of grain across all of the different elements that we created, which is going to create that continuity. So I'm going to push it up around 50. I'm going to click Apply. And uh, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to add another filter. This one is called Fringe. And this is going to be the one that really hides our crimes. I mean, it already looks decent, but you can sort of tell that, that this was Photoshopped. The shadow created some depth to make it look a little bit more realistic. But uh, since we're you know, not using the highest end of graphics programs, we couldn't get the best edge. And so we're going to sort of lean into that by using this Fringe technique. And um, what you can see it does is it creates this sort of trippy sort of effect. But before we apply that, we're going to duplicate this layer again. And you'll see why in just a second. So I'm going to duplicate that right here. I'll then go to Filter, Fringe, and I'm going to boost that just to really make it sort of crazy right in here. I'll click Apply, and then I'm going to use my Cutout tool. So now here's where cutting out is really useful. I can cut out from his face right here. So I use a large, soft-edged brush, like so. And I'm going to hide some of that defringe technique from the area of focus. So like his face right in there, uh, perhaps around you know, like the lacrosse stick head right there. His legs are a little bit nutty right in here, so I can sort of tone that down a little bit. So basically, I'm just sort of pay, peeling that back a little bit, just so it's not so intense. And that soft edge brush lets me sort of take away a little bit at a time, and then I can always add it back in. So if I want it back in here, I can get it. Um, I think I don't want it here. There we go. All right, and then finally, what I'm going to do, um, if you've ever used Instagram, this is a, a technique um, that you maybe have used before. It's a vignette. And so it's going to add sort of shadows around the outside. Uh, and again, if you add it across the entire image, um, oh, you know what? Here we got to do that one more time. So I'm going to hit Cancel. We're going to go to File, Save. You'll see when I added that vignette, it wasn't applying to the cutout areas. So I'll go to Save Image again as a JPEG. I'm going to call it Sports Graphics 2. I'll click Download, and save it to my desktop or into a folder, hit Close, and I'm going to add it back in. So a new layer as an image. Now it's flattened again at the top. And now I'm going to add that vignette effect across everything. And so again, it's just enhancing the continuity across the whole image. I'll go ahead and I'll click Apply. Now we can save this one final time. We'll call this Sports Graphic uh, End as a JPEG. We'll click Download. Now that is the finished, finished version. Now this technique can be used for really um, a whole variety of things. Here's another example of a lacrosse themed uh, graphic. Uh, you can see that the colors got uh, sort of crazy on the, the defringe level right there. But go ahead and try to follow these steps. Good luck.